My name is Chaim Mailspin. Uh, Chaim is a Hebrew word. Uh, I'm a Galilean. I live in the Galilee, Israel. I'm actually the director of the Aliyah Return Center, guest house and ministry here in the Galilee, uh, helping Jewish people return and be received in Christian hospitality. But I didn't always live here in Israel. Uh, I didn't always believe in Yeshua. It was a journey that God took me on. Um, my parents, uh, my, my mom actually was born in Canada. My dad was born in America. Uh, my dad would go to the synagogue, you know, like the, the Jewish people. He studied the, the Torah, the yeshiva, uh, and all this. But even though his family wasn't religious, they still did many, uh, the feast days, you know, Passover, Pentecost, tabernacles, etc., you know, the Feast of Trumpets. And uh, he was raised in this, met my mom, and my mom was a worshiper. She was singing worship on the street. And, she, and he said, well, you're singing songs. What songs are these? She says, I wrote these songs to God because I love God. And he, he says, you know, we don't have this closeness with the Father, this love of the Father. We don't have this. So, said, so her brother introduced him to Yeshua. And together, they, uh, they later got married. And uh, then later they had me. And, uh, and this is how I en ended up coming to the world. And actually, I've, I'm now age 32. I became a believer around age 13. Uh, and I was in America then. I, I made my immigration to Israel from America. So in America, when we were in Ohio living, uh, what happened is I understood the understanding of sin. What is sin? It's pulling us away from God. And I understood that I am separate from God. And this was very hard for me because I'm a person who loves much. And, and when I felt, hey, this is separating me from God's love. But there was something holding me back. I'll tell you what it was. I mean, I felt I want to be a fun person. I don't want to just sit in church. I don't want to be boring. I thought these things. And these are actually lies from the devil because I understood as I looked at different uh, churches, I said, I don't know if I want to sit there. But I understood God is one who does good business. Good business means not only at the beginning will it be good, but at the end it will be good. And this is good business. And the devil does bad business. The devil, he says, it will be good here, but later very bad. So it was, it was a very hard battle for me. I remember in America, my parents would take us to where we, near where we bought my horse. We lived on a farm. I had a horse to ride on. Very fun childhood. I can't say that I was involved in drugs or all these things as a young boy. In fact, my family, even though we are Jewish, I'm, I said a Jewish Galilean, uh, still our family wasn't, I was raised into a believer home. My parents were both believers when I, and they raised us, we had Bible studies every night. But the thing is, it wasn't personally mine. But I started to feel God saying, will you come to me? Will you come to me? And I said, no, I won't be boring. Will you come to me? One night we went to where I bought my horse. And uh, there was this big revival meeting. And uh, every night they said, come home to the Father. And they sang this song, oh sinner, come home. And, you know, for Jewish people, it's very hard for us to understand that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah. For Jewish people, we think, Oh no, the Christians are the ones, they did the Holocaust on us. We, the Jewish people think this. Us Jewish people, we think, oh no, the, the ones who did the, uh, the Catholic pogrom, the inquisitions of the Catholics where they killed many Jews, the crusaders that killed many Jews. So we say, how can this be the real thing? But I realized everything that Christians, not real Christians, did is not what the Father wanted or what the Father, he is a father of love. He is a father uh, who sent his only son to die. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, I'll read this really quick. It says, By grace you are saved through faith, not from yourself. It is a gift from God, not from works, lest any man should boast. You know, he, and so I realized, you know, God wants to give me this free gift. But I say, I can't receive it. I can't be like the other Christians. So one night, they, they kept on calling me, and every night for seven nights, I said, no, no. And I, I heard the music, I felt the Spirit pulling me from my chair like this, to go forward, to give my life to the Lord. And every time I said, in fact, one day I held my chair like this, I, I held onto the chair. I will not go, I will not go. It was a battle. Uh, but what happened is, by myself, in the end of the conference at night, I was by myself, and 
I said, Lord, if you're real, show me. If this is real, if this is just religion, then no, I don't want it. But if you are real, show me now and I will, and I want your forgiveness and I want your love by myself. And, and so then suddenly I felt this wave of, of the Spirit of God. And I, and I said, wow, this is real, this is real. Uh, Lord, and I started crying, 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 crying. And I said, God, take whatever it is that I am. This is for you. And I want to be your servant. And I would, then I was still thinking, wow, how will I be a believer? How will I walk this life? I don't know how to do it. But I felt God saying, don't worry. You're my son. I'm your father. And I will, I will walk with you throughout this. And after the morning, I woke up, dried my tears. And I said to everyone, family, I am now a believer. And my parents started rejoicing. And all the angels in heaven started rejoicing. And this is how I think I, I say God opened the door. He opened, he's the door, but he's also the way, the path to walk on. So this is how I began walking on this path. You know, when, when we felt God was calling us home to Israel and we, we looked around and we said, where are all the believers? There's only 1% of the land of Israel is believers. Not even 1%, actually. So we said, there's very few believers here. Most people don't, don't believe in. So we just went to try to find jobs on our own and to try to find uh, where to live on our own. And it was, it was a very hard time, very hard. But God helped us because we knew we were standing on the Word of God. And eventually I was called up to the army. And I, I'm still a, a reservist soldier right now. I was called up and I, and I, I remember saying, wait, uh, you know, the, doesn't the Bible say thou shalt not kill? How can I go to the army? But then in the Hebrew I understood that it says thou shalt not commit murder. So I said, Lord, I'm ready to protect, to defend the innocent. So I went to the army and I, went, I was called up to go to Lebanon to fight against the Hezbollah who were shooting the rockets. I was called to go to Gaza where they were shooting the rockets and take out the tunnels. I had to, I'm the one who had to blow up the tunnels. That was me and our team. Uh, yeah, and so it was, it's, uh, and God protected us. I'm still alive. I mean, many, many missions we were on, I could have died. I had many bullets shooting all around me, and I, ne and I never was killed yet. Praise the Lord. I think God is watching out for, for, not only for me, but He's watching out for the whole land in general. He says, it says in the Bible, He, in Deuteronomy, He looks at the land from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. But it's also amazing for our whole nation because we were like this. It says in Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 24, it says, I will take you from among the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and I will bring you back into your own land. That's here in Israel, into your own land. And then, Ezekiel 36 verse 25, and then I will sprinkle the clean water on you. You will be clean from your filthiness, from your idols. I will cleanse you, verse 26, a new heart I will give you. I will take out the stony heart out of you and I will put in you a heart of flesh, a new heart. I will put also my spirit in you and I will cause you to walk in my statutes. You will keep my judgments and you will do them and you will live in the land that I gave to your fathers. And you will be my people and I will be your God. So it's a very... Little few verses there which summarize what happened with me. We were living in America and God says, I am bringing you back. Not just in Ezekiel, but there's, a, there's at least, there's around 700 mentions of a return to Israel. So one day the same thing happened with us. We felt God says, it's time to return to Israel. It's time for you to come to Israel. So I was, we were in America and then we go to church and this man comes in with this long white hair long white beard, he comes into, our, into the church and he says, I'm here to confirm that these words you're reading are true. You will come back to the land. And he gave my dad a bag of gold coins and it was worth thousands of dollars. My dad took it, he bought plane tickets and we said, we're going, we've never been to Israel before. But he says, we said, this is a sign from God and it's fulfilling the word I just read. I will bring you back and I will take out the heart of stone and I will put a heart of flesh and you will have your spirit within you. So that night that I told you when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, suddenly I realized just to become a believer, that's one, that's the door, but there's also a path that we have to walk on. And this path is 
well, one of the things is the Jewish people must come home. It says the Christians, it says in Isaiah 49, verse 22, the Christians will take the Jewish people in their arms and they will bring them to Israel. It says, Romans 11, those nations will be grafted into the cultivated olive tree of the house of Israel. And it says, Romans 11, verse, uh, uh, verse 11, for this cause the salvation has come to the nations. Why? So that they can make us jealous. So that's what we are part of right now. I feel that I am living in fulfillment of, of the word of God. And uh, I would like to just say that here in the Aliyah Return Center guest house, it's a, it's a guest house where the Aliyah means the return, the return of the Jewish people to Israel. They will return. We want to be inside the Bible. So we want to give them a free stay and a free tour. Uh, just being here in the land of Israel and then also being able to help welcome many Jewish people here and partnering with many nations like from all over the world.